What's up welders? In this video I'm going to show you how to TIG weld some thin aluminium and because I didn't have any lying around I decided to weld some aluminium cans. By the end of the video you're going to have a good understanding of the settings I've chosen and why. I'm using the Yes Welder 250P ACDC machine. You will see that it's a very capable machine. The settings used will be able to translate to your own welder to a certain extent. Every machine is different on how they behave once you strike an arc but you'll have a good understanding of how to adapt the settings to your machine to get the results you require. I'll quickly show you the settings now, get to some arc shots, and then I'll circle back and explain why I chose each setting. I've got it to AC pulse, 2T because of the foot pedal, half a second pre-flow, 5 amps for the start amps, 0 upslope, 38 peak amps, 5 amps for the base, 250Hz AC, AC balance of 35, 75Hz per second at 75%, 0 downslope, 5 amps end, 5 seconds post flow. To get good text, I highly recommend hitting the like button. Now, seriously, it helps the videos get discovered, plus the world needs more cans welded together. For the tacks, I butt the two cans together. I use the TIG wire as the first point of contact from the arc. I keep the tacks as small as possible because this will help keeping the heat down when I'm starting to weld on them later. To start the weld, I position the tungsten as close as possible to the tack and max out the pedal. If the tungsten distance is too far away, the potential for the arc to stray and blow a hole in the can is increased. Don't ask me how I know. It takes a while for the first tack to melt, but as soon as it does, I'm ready with the first dab of wire. When the weld pull temp is on point, I lean the torch forwards about 15 degrees towards the wire to direct the arc quickly, melting the cans while also preheating the large diameter TIG wire. This will prevent the wire cooling the weld puddle quickly, forcing me to pause to get the correct weld profile and penetration. After three to four dabs of the wire, the heat is building up quickly. I am scanning the last couple of dabs of the weld bead to see how it's laying down. If it's beginning to flatten out, the pull is too hot, so I back off the pedal, but not too much. I still need a substantial amount of current to mount the 332nd TIG wire. This is where I use travel speed, also removing the wire from the arc zone in between adding the wire. This cools the wire, using it as a heatsink. The camera is in my line of sight and adding of the filler wire. So the welds aren't the best here, but I still showed it because you can clearly see the process. This is my first go at welding aluminium cans, so it took me an afternoon to get to the stage where I was happy with it. Like any welding, it takes practice. The Yes Welder doesn't show amperage on the fly with the foot pedal modulation, so I couldn't film it. I'd recommend giving this exercise a try. The weld hones your skills at controlling the heat from the pedal, the travel speed and the filler material. Before going into why I set the welder the way I did, I'll give you a brief background on me. I've been a coded welder for coming up 25 years and I enjoy sharing my knowledge because all those years ago someone else with a lot more experience done the same for me. So if you're new to the channel and you found the content helpful, consider subscribing because I'll be posting more how-to videos like this in the future. When it comes to welding thin bits of aluminium, you want to have no gaps whatsoever. With the aluminium cans, you'll need to put a hole in the centre because when it comes to the last part of your weld, the pressure buildup inside the two cans will make the weld blow back at you. Before I take the cans together, I use some red scotch bright pad to clean off any anodizing. You want to pay particular attention to the inside. For the TIG wire I'm using is 332nd or 2.4mm 53-56. It's mainly used in the marine industry for its corrosion resistance. I use it for cast aluminium repairs. It's a little big for what I'm doing here, but I'm going to use it as a heat sink to take some of the heat away from the aluminium cans. Another thing with this wire is if you're ever getting anything anodized, it is going to anodize the same color as the parent material. Some of the other wires won't do this. First off is the torch. I decided to use the standard type torch setup, a regular 332nd or 2.4mm collet body 
with the collet that came with the machine. I'm using a 2% lanthanated tungsten. This is the only size and type of tungsten I use for all the welding I do at home, plus 90% of the welding at work. It can weld everything except the cracker door. When sharpening the tungsten, I'm looking to get around 20 to 25 degrees of angle, not Celsius. This is going to soften the depth of penetration. You can flatten the end of the tip. This is known as a blunt. I don't always do this. The welding process will create a slight ball on the end. This is a trait of AC-DC welding. The alternating current heats the tungsten. Combined with the current flow, a ball is formed at the tip. For the cup, or also known as a ceramic, I'm using the number 5. Gas coverage plays a big part in arc stability. Aluminium is a non-reactive metal, so huge cups used for stainless steel and titanium will actually negatively affect the weld. The cup size will roughly require double the cubic feet per hour of argon. This number 5 cup will need 10 to 12 cubic feet an hour or 4.7 to 5.7 litres per minute. If you don't use cubic feet an hour, times the CFH by 0.47 and you'll get litres per minute. I will be maxing out the amount of tungsten stick out at 5 sixteenths or 8 millimetres. The ideal maximum opening of the cup size. A number 5 is a sixteenth or around 8 mil. I think all cup sizes are a fraction of a sixteenth of an inch. That's the torch and argon flow rate set up. Now it's time to dial in the machine settings. I was using AC-DC pulse. This allows me to run a little more amps to keep the arc stable, but the pulse will keep the weld pull more controlled from the excessive heat buildup. The thinner the material, the faster things turn pear-shaped from the heat. The first setting is pre-flow. This is the delay in tenths of a second before the arc starts. I set this for 0.5 of a second. This is to get rid of the sudden rush of gas on the way out before the arc starts. Next is start amps. I had mine set at 5. 10 is fine, but I'm doing a review on this machine on my website Welding Empire, so I'm seeing how it works. For the upslope time, I will leave it at 0 because I am using the foot pedal that the welder came with. Peak amps I set at 38. Next is base current. When you have a pulse selected, it requires a base amperage to switch to. I could have gotten away with 10 or 12, but you can see the quality of a welder by how it handles low amps when TIG welding. The next setting is AC frequency. The switch from AC to DC. For thinner material, I lean towards a higher frequency. First, it will reduce the amount of penetration. The second reason, it will narrow the width of the arc, resulting in a smaller weld pull. I'll be running 250Hz. Next is AC balance. AC balance is the switching from AC to DC in a percentage of 1 second or hertz. So over 1 second, it would be 65% in DC and 35% in AC. I have increased the AC above the 30%, which is a good place to start with most aluminium settings. This setting now happens at 250 times per second. With a little more AC balance, I reduce the penetrating properties of the direct current. The next selection is pulse frequency. This is where the amperage is cycling from high to low. I set these earlier at 38 and 5 amps. The range on this machine is... 0.2 or 5 seconds up to 200 times per second. I have this set at 75 hertz, so that would be 38 amps for 75% of the time and 25% at 5 amps. The next setting is downslope time. I will be doing this with a foot pedal, so I'll set it at zero. End amperage, I set this at 5. Having a lower end current when you finish the weld will avoid the potential for any crater cracks. The thinner the material, the lower the end current. And finally is post flow. This is more to protect the tungsten as opposed to the aluminium. The oxide layer forms pretty quickly on that, so that looks after itself. I had it set at five seconds, and this would keep the tungsten in the shielding zone, keeping it nice and clean. For some yes welder specific settings, the next selection would be tungsten diameter. I've got mine set at 2.4 millimetres. This is why there is a triangle with an exclamation mark in it. It's saying that it's out of its recommended parameters. When it comes to engaging the foot pedal, I set the gas flow at the same time. You need to hold the pedal down for around 7 seconds, so this gives you plenty of opportunity to get the correct flow rate. When the machine recognises the pedal, it lights the remote symbol. As for the Yes Welder 250P AC-DC machine, what do I think of it? Well, I've had it for two years and I think it's an awesome machine. I'd highly recommend it for any serious DIYer out there. I have a 10% discount code in the description below. So if you're looking to get anything from the Yes Welder website, you'll be able to save a bit of money. 
I will get a small commission from your purchase, which I'll use to buy more welding gear so I can do more reviews. If you stuck around to the end of the video, I hope you found it helpful because I do appreciate your time. Be good or be good at it.